Hello. Hello. Anyone hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I had a problem where I managed to disable my audio. That's why we're late. And then I couldn't figure out what was going on with Zoom. I'm an idiot. Anyway, uh, oh, and this is all live on YouTube. Fun. Uh, cool. Welcome everyone to, what is it, round four of Astana. Um, my name is uh, Ron. My preferred pronouns are he or they. Judging with me, we have. Hi, my name's Anne. She, they. Uh, hi, um, Mia. She or they, please. Great. Uh, now, if we could go through and uh, have each team introduce themselves, provide their. But I, one second, let me just shut down everything that was causing the audio problems on my computer. Cool. Yeah. So, uh, starting with opening government, if you could go through and give me your names and speaking orders. Hey, um, I'm Deepa. My and I'll be the second speaker. Onrege is the first speaker. Sorry, what was the name of the first speaker? Uh, first one, uh, Onrege, second one, Didam. Great, and in opening opposition, who do we have? We have... Okay. Yeah, look. okay, Noor's first speaker from Clash, um, Chad Collectors, and then it's Rahaf, second speaker. Wonderful, in closing government, uh, Eric speaking first, uh, here that is fine. And second speaker? Uh, I'm speaking second. Here. And closing opposition? Machi speaking first, here they please. Sergia speaking second, she, please. Sorry, I, could you, uh, opposition whip, could you repeat yourself? I can't hear you regularly. You didn't hear me? You were very quiet. Is anyone else experiencing that? Uh, I can just get closer. Nothing. That's a little bit better, yeah. Okay, so my name is Olivia and I'm the second speaker. She, please. Wonderful. Okay, uh, I, sorry, as I was going around, I meant to say, uh, does anyone, uh, in case you're not aware, this room is going to be streamed um, or is currently being streamed, I suppose. I presume that means the tab team has collected all your consent, but I'd just like to offer all participants one more chance. Uh, if you want to opt out of being streamed, uh, now would be a good time to say so. In the absence of that, we will proceed uh, with the motion. Could I, so. could I make an announcement? So I would like to inform adjudicators that by the end of the round, I will send you to the separate breakout room. So uh, there is no need for participants to leave the building and you can like uh, decide on your, make decisions and et cetera in the separate breakout room. So thank you. Great. Um, I'd also encourage uh, internet bandwidth permitting all teams to turn on their video. I just think it's nicer to uh, not speak to a row of black squares as well as we'll make the video hopefully slightly more engaging for those watching the stream. Anyway, without further ado, on the motion, this house would grant all nation states the right to veto any transfer out of their country of art which is deemed to be cultural heritage. Uh, unless there is any questions or clarifications needed, I would like to invite the Prime Minister to open the debate. I am I audible? Okay. Uh, I am starting my clock, I can begin. Well, first of all, I want to specify that I will be uh, dealing with the legitimation, le le legitimateness of the veto, and my pa partner will uh, be talking about practical aspect of it. So the first question I would like to answer is, uh, uh, why does a country's uh, art should belong to that country? Why should it be exhibit being exhibited in that country? And I would like to explain this by three aspects of it, the uh, identity, historical knowledge and representation of national and cultural background. Uh, I'm going to ex explain this by saying that uh, the art that is created in a country is not a created that is, is not something that is created only by the artist, it, it is created by the people of that nation, by the uh, 
cultural happenings by the cultural accomplishments and cultural sufferings of that nation. So actually any art, any art piece that is created, any historical uh, building, uh, even uh, any uh, sculptures, art uh, paintings, uh, every single art piece is actually influenced actually uh, touched upon by these uh, national happenings, national historical happenings. And these, these things are uh, created, these things occur by the help of, by the aid of uh, the people of that nation. Uh, yes, you can come, I can take the question. Okay, so how the veto is going to look like? Is it going to be governmental veto? Is it going to be parliament's veto? Is it going to be people's veto at some point? What, how it will look like? It's a policy motion. Well, uh, you can, you're right. This should be clarified. I we are uh, viewing it as a governmental veto, uh, as a uh, veto that is that can uh, be imp imposed upon uh, special companies that that uh, take the art piece away, that take the art piece outside of the country by uh, financial means, pay by paying for it, because we consider that we think that. Uh, any nation who does not want to give away their uh, art piece that they have control over, they wouldn't. So we are thinking of uh, governmental uh, vetoes that are imposed on uh, special companies uh, and any other financial buyouts. So uh, to explain the uh, identity, historical knowledge and uh, other aspect I mentioned, uh, people take part in these creations and they feel a belonging to that creation. They feel uh, their own identity, they feel they feel their own history in that art piece. So uh, the exhibition of those art pieces within that country that is created in it uh, means lots, 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 lots more than exhibiting it outside of the country in another culture. Since the feeling of belonging, the feeling of creating that art piece in a person's own historical, historical background means so much in terms of uh, their uh, attachment to it, their feeling of belonging to that art piece. So uh, exhibiting that uh, art piece within the country means uh, a few benefits and a few harms in terms of exhibiting it outside the country. First of all, financial benefits. Uh, Cultural tourism tourism is uh, biggest incomes of many countries such as my own and taking away those art pieces, taking away the reasons that people visit that country, that people make payments in that country, they uh, go to restaurants, hotels and other stuff in order to visit those, in order to see those, I'm not going to take any other questions, uh, in order to see those uh, art pieces, create a reason, create a motive for other people to come into that country. So uh, financial benefits of people that are living, that are created that art piece and live in that country uh, benefit from these in uh, huge grand scales, such as uh, their uh, employment, their uh, sellings, their, uh, any other aspect of cultural tourism. In addition to that, they benefit from exhibition within the country in a cultural, uh, cultural aspect. They learn their own country, their own uh, history by viewing, by seeing those um, cultural art pieces by visit, having a reason, having a motive to visit those countries, uh, sorry, uh, those art pieces within museums or within um, certain places that uh, offer a historical, uh, historical view, historical knowledge within the country. So uh, we give motive to our own natives by keeping the art piece inside to learn our own history, to learn our natural ident by national identity uh, by keeping those art pieces inside the country. So, uh, the, what I mentioned, uh, the feeling of losing what is what's their own. I mean, uh, losing national ident identical uh, art pieces. Uh, losing them, giving away them, giving them away uh, to outside of the country means uh, losing an uh, identical side, uh, identity side of the uh, of a person. I mean, when you uh, lose your art, when you lose your own art, your the art that represents uh, your own historical background, your nation's historical background, means that other countries are able to possess your natural history, possess your, the pieces that represent your country, uh, represent the sufferings and accomplishments of your people, of your nation. They, uh, the meaning that uh, they can obtain your uh, historical background, they can obtain and exhibit your own accomplishments and sufferings, create a, a feeling upon people that 
uh, their own national identity doesn't mean that much, doesn't uh, impose a power that is that uh, strong. In addition to that, uh, being able to benefit from these arts, being uh, the chance of benefiting from these arts financially and culturally are aspects that uh, legitimizes the veto, this veto of losing the art pieces. These benefits and harms uh, that are imposed on the people by giving those art pieces away, give the nation the legitimation that it needs by to use this veto in terms of its uh, influence on its own people. The people that and the power of people in creating these art pieces support this legitimation, support this veto, this veto's righteousness by uh, taking place, taking part uh, in that create creation its own. Uh, thank you for listening. I would like to thank the Prime Minister for that fine speech. And now I would like to invite the leader of the opposition to begin the case for the opposition bench. Hey, can you guys hear me? Hello? Yeah, you're audible. Okay, cool. All right, my time is gonna start uh, now. Okay, so remember um, in the days of overt colonization? I don't really, I wasn't born in it, but you hear back in the day about how leaders like Neapolitan would go into Egypt from France and after uh, their wars and battles, they would just raid everything without anyone's permission, right? Because in European civilization, uh even today right there's this entitlement that things are theirs and og tries to address the sense of entitlement and the past of art exchange and colonization with uh this kind of a policy right but they don't they don't really explicitly tell you about like cultural pr protection i mean their their biggest impact is more about tourism than it is about like trying to keep your uh cultural heritage right in terms of impact analysis and in terms of the tourism, like that reason is quite vacuous if you think about it, because it's not just the museum that brings about tourism, greater infrastructure is actually needed, as well as like the world's perception of a country. So for example, in Morocco, right, there, there are lots of like cultural sites that you can go to, not museums per se, but yeah, there's cultural sites. But after ISIS became a thing, the tourism to Morocco totally dropped, even though ISIS is not in Morocco at all, right? It's because like people around the world, especially Europeans would look at Morocco associated with Arabs and ISIS and then just not want to go there. And like tourism has been declining for the past uh, six years, right? So, so this is why we see that like a museum is not going to like bring this impact of tourism. But also like a point to add is that you know, in Western society, like what is the museum? Seriously, just think about it. What is the museum? A museum is a place where there were no cultural landmarks or artifacts before that, right? It is a curation of culture for a place without no culture, right? In Morocco, for example, look at, look at Morocco. There are no museums, but there, I've seen more art and artifacts just in like the ancient mosques the ancient city of Carthage, all of these preserved sites that are not museums, right? And they're not, it's not like, um, for example, in America, I go to museums centering around African history and I'll see two artifacts from Morocco, just two. The most like bare bones explanation for like what Morocco and their history is in an American museum. So let's talk about my case. I'm gonna tell you about two things. I'm gonna tell you about access and leverage. So what is access and what does that look like? So like I said, in the past, museums were really for like, what, like uh, Europeans, Americans to enjoy the exotic art of around the world and to enjoy that delicacy, right? But today it's pretty different. 
it's not just like the rich that are able to access museums, like people all over the world can nowadays, students, right? Why is this a good thing for a veto to, um, to not be in this world, right? Why should countries not be able to say, no, we want to keep our art here? It's because, um, let's take it the Louvre in Paris. The Louvre actually expanded to the UAE and Abu Dhabi, right? In a world where Paris, they can say, no, I don't want to share my art or I don't want to release it to another country because we associate the brand of the Louvre so heavily with Paris and Par Parisian culture that we don't want to outsource it to, for example, Abu Dhabi. Like that could be an argument as to why you would veto even Paris, right? We don't think that this is a good thing for access. Otherwise my partner wouldn't have seen the awesome masterpieces in Abu Dhabi uh, herself, right? So my second argument is much more important. So I'm gonna spend the rest of my speech on it. It's about leverage, right? Let's take a look at this, uh, the country of Syria, okay? So in 2011, before the war, we had a lot of cultural sites from the Greeks, the Romans, uh, Babylonians, Arabs, a huge hodgepodge of history in Syria because Damascus is the oldest city in the world, right? In a world where we have the veto, let's take a look at Bashar al-Assad, right? You want to go to Bashar al-Assad and trade some art. In Gov world, Assad could veto um, letting go any of his historical artifacts, right? Because he wants to destroy them, because he wants to destroy that cultural heritage and basically show a point to the world, to the oppressors. See, in opposition world, what you could do to Bashar al-Assad is organize an international council and action in order to uh, export those historical sites before they could get destroyed. You understand? You could transcend the autonomy of uh, Syria as a state in order to save the art, which has way more value than the personal opinion of like a non-rational state leader, right? Why shouldn't the international community, uh, you know, go in and try and save that art? They didn't. That's why a bunch of it is fucking destroyed and like no one can see it ever again, right? We should be able to transcend. Or let's take Israel as an example, right? There's a bunch of Palestinian history that Israel purposefully covers up in order to create a narrative for Zionism. And basically in a world where you can veto having any of your art exported because in the name of cultural preservation, you're actually kind of like erasing a culture from the rest of the world too, the Palestinian culture, right? Shouldn't Palestinians be able to show the world what they have to offer in terms of their cultural heritage and history, but because they live in a colonized state where, this, where the government doesn't speak for them, the government can cover up all of that evidence, can cover up all of that art in order to say like, no, we are the state of Israel. This is what the history looks like, contrary to what um, you know the terrorists believe, right? So I really think that like art is not just for a specific person, it really is for a bunch of different people. And you know, this is what OG kind of says with like tourism, right? If it's for a bunch of different people, why can't they just fly to the country where it's from? Well, like I've tried to explain, cultural perception to that country really changes how tourism operates, as well as the infrastructure of that country. And oftentimes they are third world countries, right? So I don't, I don't think that this is how you actually change perception or get access to art right? Like just saying, oh, go fly there. Because like I said, most Americans think that the Middle East is dirty. So how do we solve that problem? We solve that problem through discourse and access of information, right? This is why we shouldn't let a state leader or anyone just veto uh, exporting that art. So I truly believe that like, you know, government stance is not the way to go. And I'm very proud to oppose. Thank you. I'd like to thank the Leader of the Opposition for that fine speech. Now I'd like to invite the Deputy Prime Minister to continue the case for opening government. Uh, okay, can you hear me? Okay, I will arrange my time and start. Okay, so I... is, we're supposed to have a wing uh, or someone in the room who does the timing on a screen share, but... So I hopefully everyone's timing for themselves. I know in the previous rounds, there's been a visible clock, but all right, when you're ready, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Okay, no problem. 
Okay, so uh, I have two main uh, rebuttals, uh, and I will be uh, having two other um, arguments as well. Uh, for the uh, first uh, rebuttal, the, the, the other team is saying that uh, the perception of uh, uh, country is uh, also a determining factor in their uh, tourism. But the uh, thing is that what they are not realizing is uh, when you say uh, I'm taking this artifact out of a country because they are not able to protect it, uh, you're probably also causing the perception of this country to go uh, worse than it was before. So it would also be affecting the perception a country has in other uh, in the more developed nations. So that might also be uh, causing a problem about the perception point that you have. And also, um, what they're trying to say is that people wouldn't be going to to a country just for uh, the museum and uh, they would be also able to see the, these in other countries but like uh, this is an, uh, not this is not seeing the fact of cultural tourism that, that is going on all uh, over the world but for example like millions of tourists are coming to Istanbul just to see the Turkish museums that are in here and just to see the uh, culture in place and uh, when you are uh, uh, taking this right of veto you uh, say that uh, Turkish government has no uh, right has no chance of saying no uh, to these tourism and to these museums uh, going out of their country to going uh, ex extinct. And we, uh, as my teammate has been uh, 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 saying, uh, these countries uh, have all the right to uh, be having the uh, Having the money that is coming from the tourism and having the uh, recognition that is coming from cult cultural uh, artifacts that they have. Uh, also, um, like you're talking about accessibility, I really can't understand why do we decide for the country themselves if uh, they want their artifact to be accessible throughout the world or not? Because like this is the same thing as uh, saying, "Oh, the Didam, you have a very nice computer, and we are going to be sharing it with the other people." And Didam has no right in saying something in that. With the right of veto, uh, they will be uh, deciding uh, uh, if. Uh, the benefits from this uh, thing that they have will be going to themselves or to the other country. And my teammate has been explained that they have every right to do so as it's a part of their own culture. So um, the, going on with my own arguments, the thing is that the, these transactions will be probably conducted by the private sector because like uh, the, the government, if they're going to be vetoing it in the person, why would they even be selling it? So we, I believe that everybody would be uh, okay, if we are saying that these vetoes are uh, imposed upon a upon the private uh, sector part, so if we uh, look at them, they uh, they will be uh, transacting uh, the, these the cultural artifacts of the country for the sake of gaining money by themselves, not by uh, thinking about the benefit of all of the country and all of the other people who have a say in this cultural artifact. And what you are doing is that you are taking a part of the identity and the culture of the people, or all of the people uh, of a country, without giving giving any kind of saying any kind of uh, co taking any kind of consent from them this is very problematic and also uh, um, besides the idea let's the, the idea part of it you're also taking a um, tangible be benefit from them as well like that is uh, in the form of uh, tourism. Well, the, uh, developing nations have the right and also the need of tourism in their country that is uh, going to be coming from these uh, cultural uh, artifacts. And then giving a veto right means that they now can have the protection of uh, this uh, tourism that is uh, going on uh, in their um, uh, country. Uh, for example, uh, the, this is a very, very important point because like uh, the, there would be uh, millions of uh, to tourists that is uh, coming uh, to uh, a developing nation that they wouldn't normally go just to see their uh, cultural artifact. And also this means they will probably be they, uh, seeing their culture and will be providing some uh, kind of money uh, for this nation as well. So. Um, the other foreigners, the other nations has no right of uh, stopping this kind of benefit, this kind of money uh, from coming uh, to a country. Uh, and also, uh, I want to be talking about uh, why a veto right is the only option that we have uh, for a country to protect their uh, own cultural uh, heritage. Well, but the thing is that, uh, as the other team has been uh, talking about, the uh, countries who are trying to take the cultural heritage out of the other one will, will probably have arguments like, well, you don't have enough budget for protection, you uh, can't uh, create the uh, necessary physical uh, conditions or you're not able to uh, protect this uh, artifact that you have. They might be having a, a discourse uh, like this. But the thing is that probably the, this uh, uh, 
phys these issues related to physical problems, not enough, but they will not be permanent. But when you are taking an artifact out of a country to uh, another, this uh, transaction is permanent. You, uh, it is uh, very unlikely for the country to do, be taking it uh, back uh, to their uh, own to their own country uh, because uh, they have had a, a money that is coming from tourism in their country as well, and also they will be having a great deal of international support. Uh, uh, as well. For the other country who uh, the artifact uh, belongs to, we should be able to create a great deal of international pressure to be taking the artifact uh, to their country the, after the conditions uh, have uh, arisen. For example, um, a lot of artifacts have been uh, gone out of Turkey when the, during the Ottoman Empire times because uh, the foreigners said uh, Ottoman Empire cannot protect this. They don't have enough money for uh, uh, the discovery of those. Uh, but these conditions actually changed in years. And now the Turkish Republic could all uh, could be able to protect these and uh, have some uh, money that is coming from tourism uh, uh, right now. Uh, but because uh, of the power of the uh, European countries that has taken all the artifacts out, they can uh, do literally uh, uh, literally uh, nothing. So uh, we, uh, we uh, have no say in uh, saying no to our culture uh, and our money going out of their uh, out of our country. This is very uh, problematic. Well, also uh, like um, if I, uh, if we don't have a, uh, give a right of veto, but only create a uh, discourse that this, this problem can be uh, talked upon uh, and give uh, every country a uh, right of uh, vote, that would also again be problematic because probably these country these countries that cannot protect their cultural heritage they, uh, would not be able to create the international support for uh, their uh, for for the uh, protection of the artifact in their uh, country. This is also very pro problematic. So um, the uh, other countries definitely have no cultural connection or sovereignty uh, rights that upon a cultural artifact in one country. So the benefit that is coming from them should be uh, gone to the, the country itself. Oh, my time is over. I'm sorry. Thanks for listening. I would like to thank the Deputy Prime Minister for that fine speech. Now I'd like to invite the Deputy Leader of the Opposition to extend the case, sorry, continue the case for opening opposition. Can everyone hear me? Okay. Just give me a second to set my timer. And let's go. Okay. Citizen of the United Arab States, it's really important for us to go visit the Louvre in AD. So what happened to me when I went there, I actually had uh, I went to a place where I had philosophy, science, literature, a glimpse of the Romanian civilization, and then a touch of the ancient pharaohs, and then I stumbled on Buddhism, Christianity, Islam, uh, and even after all of this stuff, I went and saw a lot of piece of works from Iran, and then I got stuff from China, and all of this stuff. What means, what, what I mean by that is that when I go to one place and see all of these cultural piece of work, or see all of these uh, representations of the old civilization, I'm not claiming or stealing any of the culture, because <laughs> any smart person can actually know that this is not a culture, because you're not going to go to one place and you're not going to see hundreds of pieces of work, and then you're going to say, oh, they're stealing the culture, because which culture are they stealing? They're technically just using, uh, they're, they're just technically just getting all of these representations of the old civilizations and the cultural um, heritage, whether it was a performance, whether it was an object, because I'm going to be talking about how it might be other than just an object, because it might be a music or a dance performance or any of these. So here's where we clash directly with whatever is brought with the opening uh, uh, government, because we got actually two points, uh, or honestly, uh, sorry, uh, three points from them. A, they keep on saying that 
the government has the right, but I don't know where do they live actually, because they do have the right. No one is forcing the Egyptian people to send all of these ancient pieces to Paris. And that's the point, because they don't still need the bureau because they do have the right to have, they do have the control and have uh, any right to control all of the trans transparency of these pieces outside. So they're not still waiting. We're not living in some ancient way, uh, like hundreds of, uh, of ages ago, where someone who's more powerful will come to your country and steal all of yourself, forcing you to give it away and go back. So that's the thing. We're living already in a place where my partner already explained that if someone tried to do anything, international action will be taken, sorry, international action will be taken against them. So nothing is all about having the right because this country already had the right and because they willingly sent all of these things uh, out of this uh, their country. So it was never about the right and that's why their uh, first um, argument is uh, rejected about having the right. Second one is about women give them back. I believe, and I've read that myself, that a lot of contracts between the Egyptian government um, and the museum in Paris is exclusively agreement uh, between the two countries that it is willing to give its pieces back when the Egyptian government asks for it. So here's the thing. If we're talking about financial being uh, financial being benefited from all of these places, we're talking about there is no platform to represent all of these pieces. Why did Egypt send all of its ancient piece, uh, pieces of work outside? Because A, they admitted themselves because that they don't have the platform, they don't have enough money to make the museum, they don't have the capability, the people, all of these things, the awareness of people to do that. For that, they willingly gave their own pieces back and they told them that when we are ready to receive it back, we want them back and that's what happened in a lot of agreements for a lot of pieces you can easily look it up on the internet so the thing is that it was never about stealing the culture or the claimed stealing of the culture and it won't be about one giving them back because it was agreed upon a lot of conditions under a lot of circumstances that it will be brought back when someone is uh, ready to be having them back which that means that uh, that goes uh, exactly at your second um Argument and the third argument that you were talking about is about uh, if that if a country gave more of its uh, exporting art, it makes the country look more incompetent, which actually clashes directly with the uh, with what my partner has said, as we mentioned in Morocco, because they had a lot of stuff, and you can walk in an open museum, and you still won't have a lot of people going that because of uh, all of these racist stereotypes, uh, like what happened. And and also, it's like a rich country, which wouldn't make it less incompetent if it sent uh, that. So when we're talking about cultural represent uh, cultural purposes or the financial purposes, if this country is all about the financial uh, purposes, then of course they'll be real but hurt because they want to make a lot of money from tourism. But what the, what we hear what we hear from the government is that they claim that they're doing all this for the culture when they know that even if it was sent thousands of miles away, it will be still uh, represented and in light to be an Egyptian because I wouldn't be walking in Paris and I'll be like, oh, is that Pharaoh? Oh, I know that's from the UK. Yeah, I know that because everyone knows that in um, in any museum, if you pass by any piece of art, you're going to know which country was that from, the date and the civilization and ancestors and all of the history of any piece. So if it was about the financial purposes, then yes, of course, they'll be asking for all of these, like uh, claiming that they're going to be losing a lot of uh, money from tourism. But instead, if you're going to be to going to the culture, uh, like, um, receiving it you're going to know that it will be safer in all of these places that know uh how uh how to put them all in one place the worth of it how to care about it and all of uh all of these stuff so all of these things uh, directly clashes with with what uh what we had the main points from uh the government bench the thing that we're questioning here today is about who has control and under what right they have this control on these uh, pieces. Okay, so we're talking about the cultural heritage, which technically is like the evidence of a life that happened before. It might be an object, it might be a performance or like like a music or, um, you know, like a dance or it's, it might be like uh, a melody or it might be memories and all of these stuff that actually shows that there is an evidence of the life that had been uh, given before. Oh. Sorry, I didn't notice the chat. 
Uh, okay. Um, as I finish my, I'll be taken from closing off. Okay. Uh, so what we're talking about is that the cultural heritage that's already represented by all of these country will be sent to that place without stealing all of these identities, without stealing this dance, without stealing this memory. It's all that you're getting to give people more access to it. What does it mean? When I went to that museum, I actually went through hundreds of pieces and only two pieces were from specific country. The government gave us an irrational suggestion is that if you wanted to see it, then go ahead and go. They're talking about hundreds, no thousands of, of, of cultures all around the world that you'll be spending a lot of time, effort, sorry, um, uh, spending a lot of time and effort for it and you wouldn't be giving people the access. So what we're giving people here an access to see these small pieces and these culture from small countries that wouldn't be able to do it perfectly. And for all of these reasons, I'm proud to uh, oppose. Thank you. I would like to thank the Deputy Leader of the Opposition for that fine speech. And now, uh, as we move to the back half of the debate, I'd like to invite the Member of Government to extend the case to the Government bench. Ron, could you please tell me if you hear me well? Okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, so then just a sec, I'll set the timer and make my notes in order. Okay, three, two, one, go. We believe that there are countries who are actually either have a very fragile cultural identity and we believe for, for these countries, this is hugely and crucially, for the hugely important and crucially for, to sustain and develop cultural, cultural heritage. We will explain how specifically there is a systemic change on our side of the house. But second of all, also to so believe that this is also impacting countries who are, who, who are ba mainly benefiting from their cultural heritage. And we believe that because of the, uh, of the cultural appropriation from the West, there is a too, too big extent of too, too big incentive for, uh, for, for in status quo for these pieces of art to actually leave the countries, thus depriving them of the almost not like the main uh, issue of their like development. But we'll explain how specifically this will help and why this uh, these pieces of art will stay and be displayed eventually. How this will influence the cultural develop development and impacts of this cultural development and the comparative on how they are, if they are displayed the access is limited or is distorted and appropriate and is culturally appropriated, but also also, how there is just no art at all in state school. On the, the just a, uh, like a few exclusive rebuttal points in terms of oh oh. So first of all, they contradict themselves hugely. They first of all say that well, some countries are actually don't give the ability to uh, to uh, to to like to export these uh, pieces of art just to cover up their some problems of their history. And then they say well, all countries are easily to trade their their pieces of art. They, they we don't have any problem with getting this art. And th then they say that post-colonial countries don't give this give back this art. We actually believe that Western countries actually give back some parts of this art because of the guilt issue, right? If this is an originally cultural heritage of the uh, of the of the previously colonized uh, states, but we actually believe that the, the even if as uh, even if there there is a problem with the government be, being uh, like wanting to uh, not not export some of their state-owned art, we believe they won't do it anyway because it's state-owned, right? It's just really. Uh, uh, like unclear, right? And then they say about access. I'll take POI later, so please mind that. So they say about access. We believe that access is highly limited on their side of the house when the uh, when the piece of art is exported and moved out of the country. How? First of all, we believe that even if in the best case scenario, it ends up in some kind of louver or in different countries. This is just one piece out of thousand, fam like famous, world famous pieces of arts, which people don't actually even get to get to know because there is multiple like, uh, floors and a lot of uh, a lot of space where they just don't, are not really interested. If they can see it, they will just look at it from the uh, from the uh, like uh, uh, aesthetic per 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 perception and aesthetic pers perspective and not get into the cultural heritage and the story behind this art. But even if they actually see this, and even if there is a specific exhibition
information for this art. We believe that this, this issue and image is highly distorted. Why? First of all, because this, uh, this, uh, the, the, these exhibitors and the uh, curators all of, often have a limited, ex, uh, a limited information about the story and the or origins of this of these things. So we believe that they that they are not incentivized to 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 to, to tell all the story because they are members of the Western societies. They are more likely to not actually accept the the cultural blame that they might accept, or just not be not be able to translate to translate and uh, display the, the original story of all these arts because they are not the representative of this cultural or uh, cultural group, right? But even if even if it's so, it's also highly exoticized, right? Because this is something very exotic and and interesting. Those are nice pictures which are not really uh, like uh, which are not often ex uh, like seen in the in Western in Western world. Meaning that this is an objectifying thing for the art and for the cultural heritage of this society by by owning by private big cool guys who uh, own a lot of money and all, all the stuff. We believe that this is highly deprivative, and we believe this is mainly illegitimate for the for such cases of exploitation uh, to occur on the on our side. If we believe that on the comparative, if the government had believes that it's okay to uh, to export this cultural heritage it still be ca cannot veto it right so it's not a problem at all if they won't veto it and we can display it properly if it's displayed properly but going further we believe that we change the world on our side of the house even even more first of all why on the comparative the story is told better and on and, and is displayed better why because there is more access for the actual people who live in these countries to their cultural heritage now why because they go from schools to uh, on exit exhibitions to this to these museums which we, they never have an access to go to Louvre or something like that they get more media coverage and local stories about this this history of art within different cities and knowing the story of their of their society the story the history of their of their world they get and the, the issue is even if they're not allowed to actually uh, uh, to export the piece of art, and you can say, well, they will just hide it, and big oligarchs will just hide it on, under their walls. Okay, some of them will, but uh, uh, but on the comparative, some will just be, decide to either give some charity and to earn some social capital to and and display it on the museums, or they will just want to earn some money and they will put it on on the display and earn some more money. Meaning, on the comparative, we have more display of the society of the pieces of art on our side house in the local communities within these countries. What does it lead to? We believe that it increases this cultural development of this society how specifically if they stay more capital is is in, is creating to to raise a voice for the display and support of artists and culture in general why because more stories are actually covered within the media more artists want to protect their works of art to protect the the status of the of the of displaying in these museums whether this is a bad building and they want to improve it this is more likely to actually cause the social capital and political capital to improve the societal a state uh, like a uh, relationship towards this piece, pieces of art second of all there is more popularity of domestic art and history meaning that there is more demand to create it meaning that more people will pay and go for these exhibitions will pay these pieces of art more artists are interested to stay within the country and not leave the country and to create these pieces of art third of all we believe that there's more interest for people to actually look at it and popularize the culture the domestic culture in general what does it lead to and this is crucial we believe first of all this helps these people in new democracies or previously colonized countries to actually feel them associated with the state to feel that they are part of something bigger rather than just a failed a quasi democratic state that just does not provide them a normal benefit which which means that it, first of all it incentivizes them put, to put more into their country to earn in their country and put the charity or put some help towards their society not to leave the country and actually earn the give more domestic impact impact to, towards their communities actually it helps to reduce the conflicts because because you increase the, the societal uh, perception of us being as a one nation rather than individuals with different perception, which is crucially important for previously conflicted states, meaning that you increase and give the unique opportunity for these societies to build and sustain cultural development for all these reasons we beg you to propose. Thank you. <clears throat> I'd like to thank the member of government for that fine speech. Now I'd like to invite the member of opposition to extend the case for the opposition bench. Am I audible? You are indeed. Okay. Jesus, art emotions. Okay. Um, so, three, two, one. 
POI I wanted to ask from the very beginning of this specific debate. If in the British Museum, the museum, there is a Egyptian sculpture in art, who do you think has more important identity and more important heritage in the first place? Egyptians or Brits? In status quo, there are some things in that are actually outside of the country of its behavior and the beginnings and the, 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 everything that was around it is actually not anymore in the state. And we believe that to some extent, and actually to strong extent, those people that stole it or robbed it before also have a possibility to name it a cultural uh, uh, heritage and also can veto that in the first place. Why? Because probably that's also part of their story and part of their behavior. Right now, most of Egyptian sculpture is something that's actually due to colonialism, part of history of Brits, right? Many things in Louvre that were stolen during any kind of wars, any kind of colonialism also is part of the heritage and also it's part of the history in the first place, because actually it was something that's built around them. There was also something that's right now they're building it. So we believe it is impossible for opposition to prove that magically those Egyptians, Greeks, Romans, or whatever, are able to ban it right now, just return it in the first place. It's not that what, what motion says. It says that nations that actually believe to some extent it is a cultural a, a heritage of their in their state, they can veto that from traveling. So from that perspective, the most simple argument to compare us with the governments later, I'll do some uh, something with the principle. But let's start with validating nations and their identities in the first place. We believe that when you actually can ban it in the first place, it's validating specific nations towards how strong they are in the first place. Because some of them, only because they were able to stall it previously, only because they, could, they were absolutely able to take it in the first place, are going to be validated stronger. They're able to create it as their own they can claim it and they can use the right in the first place to actually say it is ours right now we can decide where does it go because there need there needs to be a government to actually veto that right also we believe we don't care because no one proved to us how many times government is going to use we believe the right itself is something really horrible for those people because if we buy everything the government are saying about how, how important this identity is how important that heritage is we can understand the slap in the face to many people that actually are are in possession on that in the first place or were in possession of that before and right now it's a cultural heritage of some other country because of that we are going to create a a really bad situation for these people because actually we're going to divide it who can choose only because and in case of their power, right? Because of that, some people are going to be stripped and they know they're stripped of deciding about also part of their history, also the parts of the culture in the first place. We believe that if we care so much about identity, if we care so much about heritage, and if we care so much as government are trying to prove about all those things, we believe that this is the worst thing to possibly do because that is the bummer. Right now, let's do two things. Eight, a... <clears throat> why gov are going to overuse it in the first place. Second thing, why it is so important in the first place therefore these people and their proud price to actually do so. So let's start with the first part, right? Why gov are going to use, is going to overuse it in the first place in many, many specific situations. We believe the simple thing, it is unpopular to actually give something that's your heritage is something that is strongly connected to you to other nations in a country no matter if that's selling or if that's any kind of touristic measures right people are possessive beasts so they believe there's something in what is their cultural heritage something what they own and you should or should own in the first place right so when government is not going to veto any traveling of this specific cultural heritage probably it's going to be something pretty unpopular to the people that are voting for them later they are not willing to do so because they also care about the voting procedures in the first place. They want to win next elections. They want to be popular in the first place. And they do not want to tell, guys, we are giving something and you can actually travel along. We, we believe that they will be going to be overused many times and do not be willing to travel at all. Right now, my principal later argumentation, but Arya, here you go. So could you please explain how it's different with the status quo when they just don't do it? We explained that they have a, a prince, like a complex of guilt. Does they are incentivized to give this back? So okay. The thing is, is the thing is exactly that the difference in this specific debate is about why those countries should or should not have the right. Right now, I also proved it. There's a huge possibility for overusage. Right. Right now, even if it's going to be a one block from our perspective, it's a huge harm. It's something that surgically was not proven by the opening opposition. Please note, panel. Also, opening opposition only telling us that maybe someone will like it and maybe somebody will, will see it and how important and this in the first place. They're not saying to us why A, it's going to be overused or even used as a veto. And second thing, why really it is so important. Right now, I'll show to you why it is important to the nations in general, right? So first thing, it's principally awesome for art to be seen as, as many people as possible. 
So let's begin. Why are this important issue not internationally? Our heritage is strongly connected due to colonialism, to wars, to previous cells, previous robberies, previous transfers. It is something that is actually connected us all. Probably we have a lot in common in case of what was happening in Egypt, what is happening in Greece, Rome, etc. I also believe it's part of our nature and it's part of our heritage in the first place. Any art of Leonardo da Vinci is something that is absolutely beautiful thing. But the second thing, usually it's something that connects us. An example of human invention, an example of human accomplishments, etc right it's something that's giving us a specific sense of pride and it's given us a sense that we actually accomplished something as a kind you can see that your kind was able to create something absolutely beautiful you just endorse something absolutely extraordinary and also you hear about it in the first place right you can watch that something was brought to your country because it is impossible for you to travel for example to england turkey or whatever because usually it's just expensive to just go to british museum whenever you live and not everybody can actually afford that also we are not thinking about that every single day. But the thing is that when actually those specific, those specific arts are going to be traveling in the first place, we believe that actually they're going to be talked about. This is going to be something pretty important because it is a part of heritage. Even if it's not something that's usually connected and it's a fair, you know, we talk to all the time, when actually it's traveling, when actually leaving, it is something that is actually talked about and something that we actually care. Also, when we see something, we love to know why exactly that, what is the history of that, how exactly it's important. So also we're getting some kind of a knowledge about it in the first place. But also, once again, there's a dispute about it. You're motivated to know what is that you're watching at the moment, what is the history behind, I don't know, Mona Lisa smiles, smile or whatever, because actually it's something empiric, something that you can see, is something that you can actually see close when it's traveling to you. Besides, in comparison, it's always kept inside and proved to you that in 99% of situations, it's going to be banned. And it's absolutely untrue, Aria, that right now they're not traveling without the ban, because right now uh, Mona Lisa was traveling not so long, about two or three years ago, it's actually traveling around inside, uh, outside the country. Also, some Leonardo da Vinci's uh, arts went to Japan, etc. It's coming and it's actually traveling in the first place. We believe in status quo, it's happening, but it's not going to happen when the veto is uh, is blocked. Also, like <laughs> the motion would not have sense, absolutely not have sense. If there won't be any traveling at all, right? But the thing is that when we're actually stripping those people of this right, we believe that it is something absolutely horrible. Okay, it's the end of time. Okay, sorry. Power to open. I thank the member of opposition for that fine speech. Now I'd like to invite the government whip to summarize the case for the government bench. Thank you. Uh, I just need one sec. We, could okay, we agree with the last speaker that we can't know real history, but uh, we think that we, we can know who is the most vulnerable country in status quo. And we stand for the world where these countries preserve their cultural heritage and they uh, can freely uh, build their own national identity that, I, as Aria says, uh, will keep uh, people inside of this country as, and uh, which will lead to the feel of pride uh, by the country I live in. Uh, so uh, opposition bench ha ha have the same argument that uh, th this uh, uh, post developed uh, uh, by means of colonization countries, for example, France, uh, UK, and so on, uh, will, uh, t uh, will preserve uh, these pictures, these pieces of art in their uh, hands, but a uh, uh, few responses. Firstly, we uh, can't understand uh, how this 
uh, me mechanism of uh, international you know, community uh, works. For example, if uh, op uh, opening a position says uh, about Israel, Israel violates uh, any international law if it's beneficial for them. Uh, so what are particular incentive to listen to this uh, international courts, the, these decisions of uh, inter uh, international community, if it's so beneficial as they describe to save these uh, uh, pieces of parts in their own museums, we don't understand. But uh, secondly, if we are talking about liberal countries, yes, who, who are prone to uh, listen international uh, laws, for example, uh, France and, and so on, uh, these liberal countries are already uh, in, inclined to avoid their, uh, uh, their uh, their colonization background, uh, and they already enact some programs of affirmative actions in order to give uh, more rights uh, to students from uh, countries they have colonized. Yes, uh, and we uh, think that uh, it works uh, the same in, in this case. Uh, we think that uh, it, it, we want to note that it is the right. It's not the obligation, and uh, UK can uh, use uh, this rights, and it can uh, just return th this uh, picture, this pieces of art to uh, to the Nigeria and other countries which were colonized by developed countries. <clears throat> What are incentive? Firstly, they uh, the view of uh, uh, collective guilt uh, is accustomed to when they learn the history in school. Uh, their teachers uh, tell them that uh, they are guilty that if they have colonized, they have shackled by their own. Uh, interest of profit so many people uh secondly they consume art for example in you say they uh, read uh, uncle tom cabin then uh, then they watch jungle uh, movie of tarantino then uh, they see all fears of dangers of slavery and they don't want to look like uh, these bastards yes uh and uh, we understand that uh even uh, in, in status uh, and thirdly they see uh, some uh, social movements for example black class lab matter and uh, i remember my colonial uh, the colonial past of uh, my predecessors of my parents uh, and uh, i don't want to look like them and that's why i will choose politicians i will vote for politicians which will return in any price this piece of art to uh, to the Ghana, to the Nigeria, and to South Africa and other countries, uh, and uh, we just uh, these developed countries uh, who uh, have no need to uh, to build their own identity because it's important to note that these transitive democracies, for example, uh, uh, Ghana, for example, uh, Ukraine, and some other countries which were colonized, colonized. Colon shackled by other developed countries, uh, they uh, needed more, they need more of these uh, pictures. When we're talking about France, when we're talking about Germany, uh, they uh, don't need these pictures. So they, their national identity is already built. It's, uh, it has developed. We don't understand the incentives of uh, these countries to, uh, to save uh, these pictures, to save their pieces of art. Moreover, uh, we understand that uh, uh, this, uh, they have own uh, pieces of art. They have Goethe, they have some uh, UK writers, uh, and uh, they don't need the art uh, of uh, Africa, yes? Uh, and, uh, but uh, moreover, they, uh, we're talking about also about private ownership uh, of these pictures. For example, uh, on, on our side of the house, uh, the, the, uh, a uh, German oligarch can uh, sell this picture to the Ghana, to the Nigeria, uh, because uh, Germany can't vote uh, the, uh, the cultural heritage of Ghana, of Nigeria. It's not their cultural her heritage. It's pieces of art uh, which belongs to uh, some German businessmen, but it uh, doesn't belong to uh, it's not German cultural heritage, and that's why on our side of the house we can uh, these governments can uh, buy it from uh, pr private owners. Yes, uh, so, so and uh, but but what what's it, uh, what is the difference? Uh, what is forbidden? Uh, for, for example. Uh, some business from Nigeria, if some business went from Ukraine and the 
the developed nations, yeah, the developing uh, identities, identities, they can't sell it to Germany, they can't sell it to France, and uh, at least on our side of the house, uh, some cultural heritage stays inside of the country, we keep, uh, yes, POI from CEO. A, veto to leave the country, not veto to withdraw that and go back to your country. Second thing, and more important, all of you're talking about can be done by negotiations without any need of the veto. Every single returning and every single tourism stuff can be done without the right to veto that staying in the first place. Yes, but also there are some negotiations which are uh, harmful from these developing countries. For example, as I said, uh, private businessmen from Ukraine sells cultural heritage of Ukraine to, to some German businessmen, to Germany as a country, to Louvre and stuff like that. It's uh, impossible on our side of the house. Uh, so, and com uh, short comparative with OO, we will say, of course, they have described uh, how, uh, how the feeling of identity is sublime, is so blissful, yeah, but we don't understand the consequence of uh, this identity of the south of the house. And Daria has explained to you uh, how it keeps uh, people in country and it leads uh, to the bigger uh, economic benefits than just some people employed in area of tourism when uh, some uh, great minds stays in the country just because of strong association with uh, their national nation, uh, national pride. Uh, Ariad has described how uh, people are sacrificing uh, their taxes, they are forced to this country just because they have this uh, irrational view of association uh, uh, created by this cultural heritage. And they don't have uh, any consequences. I would like to thank the government whip for that fine speech. And now I'd like to invite the opposition whip to summarize the case for the opposition bench, as well as the debate as a whole. Okay, so just a moment. Okay, start. Uh, so for, uh, in the beginning, I will just uh, talk a bit about the government side and uh, then uh, one, once again explain some things uh, from, uh, from my team, what we are uh, really trying to tell you and um, um, uh, tell you what, uh, what uh, do we bring to this uh, debate uh, under uh, our first um, uh, under uh, opening opposition. Uh, so uh, the first thing uh, is that I think that uh, the government uh, side um, definitely um, uh, overestimate meaning uh, the art, uh, which is basically usually closed in museum in creating the national identity in and in uh, like um, activating this feeling and this uh, this personal uh, part of personal identity every day because uh, to be honest of course uh, national identity is partly created by uh, art which is also part of history but is it, it is not because it is uh, physically closed in the museum in my country uh, this is not the reason why I probably I have never seen some pieces that I probably feel are part of the uh, the identity that I have. Uh, I think uh, that the real impact of it is not that uh, go, that huge that they are trying to say, and it is a a, a, a big part of their uh, argumentation. In fact. Uh, and the second thing, which is kind of wrong on the go government side, is that they assume that there is something like national heritage, which is objective and uh, the same for everyone in this country. Because uh, as my partner said, uh, in, in the age when we live, it, it, the, the situation looks like uh, there are a lot of pieces of art and uh, a lot of countries can feel like this is a part of their uh, cultural heritage. Uh, for example, example, I feel like uh, ancient Greece and Rome are part of the cultural heritage, also mine, because I live in Europe, right? And uh, the Christianity and, uh, and the whole culture is based on uh, that. And it's, it's not only a thing of one nation. And this is one big problem. And um, 
And uh, secondly, it's also based on historical stealing, grabbing. So it, it, it has changed uh, through the centuries and uh, it's very unclear who, uh, who is the right national owner of uh, the piece of art. And uh, what my partner said is that uh, when we have this uh, right of veto, we will just observe uh, countries that will uh, that will choose uh, who is the owner and you know who will be the winner of this battle well the country that is in a position of power the country that have enough assets to say hey that's mine of course i won't give it back to you or i won't sell it or something because i want to have it and i have a lot of uh, like assets to uh, to to make it uh, mine and to keep it mine and this is one thing that this is just very unclear because they, they are constantly saying that uh, it will be losing of national identity, uh, it will be selling it. But firstly, I don't think that uh, if we say just one piece of art, it's such a huge uh, thing in national identity. Uh, we just don't see some great impact on it. And uh, the second thing, it's very unclear uh, about uh, some real justice in here. Uh, and uh, we are giving you some real mechanism how if we assume the best case scenario of Goss that there is something like national identity based on uh, these pieces of art, uh, we show you the real mechanism, how does the uh, activization of this, this feeling of uh, national identity based on uh, culture, pieces of art, how does it really work? Uh, my partner said that it works like when there is a possibility to uh, transfer it anyhow, to sell it to someone, to borrow it, because it also happens, uh, to get uh, to to initiate a tour when you benefit even financially uh, from a, a, a around the world tour uh, of uh, some piece of art. This is the moment when it is in media, when people talk about it, when people see that it is wanted. People want to see it, want to uh, experience physically also, uh, see it like uh, with their own eyes, how does it really look? And uh, this is the moment when uh, they hear, oh, yeah, I, I can connect to that uh, as well. So this is probably something in important and it's cool uh, that, uh, that uh, anyone is interested in that. And uh, opening government said that it is a financial benefit uh, from cultural tourism and that uh, voting, uh, uh, veto is the only option. This is completely false because if if you seriously, as a government, want to protect it so much that you just won't allow uh, to, uh, to 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 uh, for any transfer, you can do a very simple thing. You can buy it. You can get. You can uh, like. Uh, uh, become an owner of this piece and then there is just no risk that someone will uh, unnecessarily sell it to some uh, someone else uh, or something like that uh, and this is very very easy government have a lot of money and for sure it is a, if it is a, a so important uh, thing in uh, this uh, national identity and so on uh, the government uh, can completely buy it and then uh, it can just do whatever uh, they want with that uh, okay. Uh, so what opening uh, opposition is uh, saying is that it is good when uh, people can experience uh, a lot of uh, cultural, cultural art diversity. So it's cool when we uh, can go to a museum and see a lot of different, uh, a lot of uh, pieces uh, from different countries, uh, cultures and so on. And we can agree with that. But uh, it is my partner who tells you why exactly it is good when uh, the, uh, the it's over time, sorry, uh, about questions. Uh, uh, why is it good when people can, can experience uh, different um, pieces of arts and why is it uh, important not to uh, use the veto? And uh, also we said, uh, uh, that uh, countries will overuse it because it's not popular when you, it's specifically when you have this veto in your country, uh, then people expect that this will be something to uh, protect it. So that's why they will or overuse. Okay, it's over time. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank the opposition whip for that fine speech and indeed everyone for a good debate.